night, race fans. I'm uh, a little bit late to the gun here with the power rankings, but they're finally here. I'm actually down in, uh, I guess, Tennessee, Mississippi, somewhere down south. It's a lot hotter down here than it is up there, but uh, racing is at full force. So um, this is our grassroots show. A grassroots show, I talk about a little bit of results from, it would be the Mod 4 division, the Pure Stock division, and the Hornet division mostly with soda sanctioned races, but there's a few tracks in there that I give a little love because a lot of those drivers typically run with soda, but maybe the track that, that they race at, like, like Jim Falls, maybe Cedar Lake, um, is not sanctioned. Also in the Pure Stocks and Hornets, we have some non-sanctioned events there as well um, out west. So we're going to talk a little bit uh, um what happened here the last couple of weeks. Uh, there wasn't a lot of racing two weeks ago, a little bit of racing here um, last week some really good races and i'll be honest with you you know one of my favorite races to watch is the pier stocks and i guess the hornets as well two weeks ago without question the most exciting races of the weekend were the hornet races and a lot of people leave they run the hornets last it just drives me nuts so hornet drivers go talk to your track promoters and say please don't run us last maybe second to last what you know before their so-called premier division or whatever but I tell you what, some of the best racing out there is in these lower level classes because there's a lot of heart, there's a lot of passion, and not everybody has a hundred grand to spend on race cars, but they can still put on a very, very entertaining race. Um, before we get into that, a little shout out to our friends over at East Central Sports, Minnesota's number one youth power sports dealer in, in racers, right? I mean, I don't care if you're running a Hornet, a Mod Ford, late model, don't matter. You need a pit bike, Right. Why not check out their SSR 125cc pit bikes that they have right in stock over there? Go talk to Mac and the boys over at East Central Sports. They'll take good care of you. They do a lot for racing, and uh, I gave him a little love in here, too. Maybe a little homer pick there, but we got to have a little fun with it. So let's jump back a couple weeks. We'll talk Hornets first. <clears throat> so a couple weeks back. Uh, I guess this would have been the week ending May 7th. Um, last Friday, there was a pair of races. And like I talked about, I wanted to talk about this on last week's show. Didn't do last week's show. Time got away from me. But over at the Fiesta City Speedway in Montevideo, Justin Earp um, got, I believe, I believe that might have been his first win. Carter Matthews put on a move. He chased him down, dime in the corner, photo finish at the line, and tell you if you missed that race you're missing out and, and and if you missed it and you want to watch it jump on a dirt race central the official streaming platform of what soda racing and of the one to go show so justin Earp getting it down there i-94 emr speedway over in fergus falls another great one i literally thought michael Dittman had it under control literally looked like he had it one last lap here comes peter martin charging around the high side and his first win over, he's won a lot of races, right? But his first win over at the Fergus Falls track, the um, I-94 EMR Speedway, congratulations. Um, both of those two, I'm going to give them the co-race of the week from two weeks ago. Excellent racing there. Now, what happened this last weekend? Fiesta City Speedway, again, great battle up front. I mean, you could have literally taken a blanket, put it right over the top of the top five cars. Heck of a race over there. That racetrack looking pretty darn racy. So if you're if you kind of look back and you're like, man, last year that place was awful. You know, they really struggled. The first couple nights over there, there was some pretty darn good racing. So you might want to check uh, out, out the Fiesta City Speedway in Montevideo. So 37A, Alex Adderman. He parked in Victory Lane. His last win came June 19th of 2021, so almost two years since his last win, and that had to feel darn good to kind of get the monkey off the back and get himself into victory lane. Granite City Motor Park, they had a rough start. Give them some, you know, cut them some slack. James and the gang over there, they've been working their tails off. They put a lot of money, a lot of time, sweat equity into that place. They're trying to make it better. Guess what? Sometimes you got to take a step back to take a step forward. There's a lot of torp equipment, but I'm pretty confident with a little help from Mother Nature, a little sun, it's going to be right back into good racing shape here before too long. But the 01, Nathan Cole. Now, this 17 year old driver from Fort Ripley, 17 wins in 2022, mostly IMC. We're going to talk about this kid just a little bit more in just a little bit. I tell you what, he could be a front runner 
for a national championship. Heck of a run by him. Now let's head over to Wisconsin, the Eagle Valley Speedway, Jerry's World, Jim Falls, Abby Lingen, the number seven. Congratulations to her, 17-year-old gal from Stanley, Wisconsin. First career win. She was super excited. A lot of people down in the victory lane. Them first wins, I'm telling you, are, are special, right? I mean, it's been a while since I've been behind the wheel of a car, but I can still remember my very first win, and you'll, you'll always cherish that. So, to the drivers getting their first wins, congratulations. Red Cedar Speedway over in Menominee. They had the seventh annual Randy, Bu Randy Bus. I, I always thought it was Bus, but it's Randy Bus icebreaker over there. Randy Bus, of course, was uh, the uh, head Wissota Tech inspector, very involved with racing. They had a memorial race for him, I guess, the last seven years. He's uh, very special to the folks over in Menominee, Wisconsin. But the nine senior, Scott Cooper, got it done. Now, this is track rules, right? This is not a Wasota sanctioned event, but it's still a great class over there. And I'm nothing against Wasota, right? I, I'm all I'm all about Wasota, but some tracks kind of feel that they don't have to sanction the lower level classes. There's really no reason to kind of on board with that. Now, Sean Poston actually snuck by Scott Cooper, not once, but twice. And the yellow saved him, right? So he parked it in victory lane. First career win for him. Another one. Congratulations. Some really good racing in the Hornets. So let's talk power rankings. And it's the buyracers.com one to go show Hornet power rankings. Now, what I do each and every week is I'm going to take in my eyes, the top 10 drivers. If we had a special, we put them all together. Who would be the car to beat, right? Who would be that person based off a little bit of last year, a little bit what's going on this year. I'll be honest, right? I didn't do power rankings the last few years, especially in the Hornets. So I'm going to probably be a little flexible here over the next couple of weeks based on what happens. So at number 10, Matt Johnston, six wins last year, ran really good, ran good all over the place, ran good at Ogilvy, came up to Superior, the Gondekla Speedway, ran really well there. I'm kind of looking at this guy thinking double digit wins here in 2023. I know, I know he sponsors the show, kind of a homer pick, but I still have a feeling he's going to be winning some races. At number nine, the hitman, Michael Dittman. 2021, 21 wins. Should have won the national championship. A little bit of a rumor has it, controversial call, uh, throttle body deal. Kind of a bummer deal. Uh, I saw some pictures. I, I guess I'm not a mechanic, but the people I talked to said it probably shouldn't have been a DQ. But what do I know? I'm just a, I'm just an old washed up racer with a show, right? But here's the deal. He got second at the opener. Probably should have won that race. He uh, kind of maybe a little protect mode. I think uh, Peter Martin kind of surprised him. But could he make a resurgence? Does he have a little something to prove after what happened a couple of years ago? Last year was kind of a probably a letdown year, but this year, keep an eye on Michael Dittman or Matthew Dittman, not Michael. I'm thinking of Michael Pittman, I'm thinking of football. It's racing. Come on, guys. Okay, number eight, the guy that beat him at the opener, Peter Martin. Seven wins last year, won the opener, and uh, that was short track. There's, of course, the I-94 Speedway. That's also non-sanctioned, so they run – at Fergus Falls and at the Viking Speedway in Alexandria, they run the short trackers, basically the same car. You can run with soda with it, but um, really good racing nonetheless. So Peter Martin in at number eight. At number seven, this is the guy that was the guy to beat. I don't know if he's racing. I'm going to talk to this guy, but he won the track championship at I-94 and at Viking. Um, oh, he's a regular there. He, I bet he won the track championships at I-94, not at Viking. But Sean Beto. 11 wins last year. Pretty confident that if you hit double digit wins last year, that's going to get you in the top 10 of the power rankings. I got him in at number seven. At number six, we have a driver from over in the Twin Forks, the track champion over at the Halverline Speedway in Crocker, Minnesota. 10 wins last year. AJ House, just outside the top five. He's hungry. He said he's planning on uh, racing a little bit more. Hopefully, we see him up in Grand Rapids on now uh, next Thursday for the opener. AJ House right now at number six. At number five, a generate second generation driver. His dad was a wheelman back in the day. This gentleman right here, they're hungry. They've been racing all over the place. This kid is going to race a lot of races this year. Carter Matthews, keep an eye on this kid up from northern Minnesota. 
Last year he won the Dean Olofsson Memorial, the Wissota National Rookie of the Year last year. Second at the opener in Montevideo, and uh, he's going to be fun to watch. There's some pretty good hot rods up there in the Hornet class, and uh, we'll see how he travels, and we'll see how what happens over the next, uh, probably the next couple weeks of openers, see if he can park in Ridgery Lane. Number four, a kid that's probably going to be his number one contender each and every week. Another second generation driver, Justin Barsness. 13 wins last year, and he won some big ones. Get this, fifth annual Chicken Shack Nationals over at the home of the Chicken Shack in Bemidji. Day two of the Paul Bunyan Stampede. Won the Hornet Nationals down at the old uh, Granite City Motor Park. The Madtown Showdown, night number one last year. Minnesota State Champ, Grand Rapids Speedway Champ. Justin Barsness is going to be a kid to really keep an eye on. This is going to be a very fun class to watch. There's some really good race car drivers coming up through the ranks here. Number three, Adam Vandersteen. 18 wins last year. That's a hell of a year. And uh, rumor has it, I think he kind of tore up some equipment at the beginning of the year, had to basically kind of borrow a car, and uh, he's still got it done. He's going to be fun to watch. A little bit of a rough start, but you can't really judge off that too much. Um, won the track championship last year at Fiesta City, Madison, and at the Casino Speedway, Adam Vandersteen at number three. At number two, probably going to get in trouble for this. This is going to be a little controversial here. Uh, I got the last year's national champ, Justin Shalitsky, 18 wins, won the Natty last year, um, Grand City Motor Park and KRA Speedway track champion. This kid, this kid right here, he's versatile, does a lot of enduro stuff. He's very well-rounded. Um, he's going to be fast. He's going to be definitely in the hunt. But I see this new name kind of bouncing around, and this kid's kind of caught my attention. Shalitsky at two, but if I put these two head-to-head, -head, I think this next guy, next guy maybe beats him. That's Nathan Cole, 17 uh, years old, 17 wins last year, mostly IMCA, but he started running with soda at the end of the year. He won this little race over in Fergus Fall called the Wasota 100, won the Mighty Axe, day two of the Piston Cup. He won the Fall Classic. Most of the hitters down at the Fall Classic, Nathan Cole right now, number one in the buyracers.com, one to go show Hornet power rankings. Now, let's jump on over. Let's switch gears here. Let's jump into the Pure Stock class. So a couple weeks back, they had one race, Pure Stock South over at the Fiesta City Speedway in Montevideo, that race right there, non-sanctioned. They got their own track rules. All those tracks in the area have a track rules deal. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's a good deal. The 44X of Alex Grenager, um, he parked in Victory Lane, night number one. couple of the hitters there that were really strong in the pier stocks. So I was kind of looking. Looks like they maybe moved up into the street stock ranks. So that's going to open the door for some drivers over in western Minnesota. This past weekend, we had another race over at Fiesta uh, City Speedway. A late race, great move on a restart. Ian Jaden in the 87. Last win, get this, 2019. So that's a couple years running. Congratulations. Great to see you back in Victory Lane. Eagle Valley Speedway over in Jim Falls, Wisconsin. Now, a non-sanctioned track for most classes, but they did sanction the Wissota Pier Stocks for 2023. So if you're chasing points, Head on over to Jerry's World every Friday. You know, you'll be able to get some good runs over there, some good cars over there. So the winner of this race, the 88 of Bob Wallstrom. Now get this, Ryan Olson, I talked to Ryan said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it hard. I'm going to try to race for a natty this year. Doors open, Jorgensen's gone, Pink Bone's gone, doors open, right? He's leading the race. Travis Hazleton. Then gave him a little, uh, I guess, uh, the chrome horn, get out of my way on a restart, bumped him up. Hazleton, I think, got a flat out of the deal. And uh, when that all went down, here comes old Bob Wallstrom charging around the high side. He took the win. Three wins last year in 2022. His kid, obviously, a standout driver, Simon Wallstrom. But Bob Wallstrom with the opening white night win over at Jerry's World. Rice Lake Speedway, Mother Nature got him. They got the heats in. The front row for that one is going to be Devin Fries looking for career win, number one, on the pole. Outside of him, veteran driver from Duluth, Aaron Burnick. So let's jump into it. Let's jump in to the buyracerts.com, one to go show pure stock power rankings um, to get this party started. Number 10, we're going to head over, uh, over by Bemidji, regular over at the Bemidji Speedway. Dusty Caspers, 
He had a pair of wins only last year, but sounds like he's going to race a little bit more this year. We could see him a little bit more in Grand Rapids. Um, we're going to we're gonna find out. Second generation driver had a heck of a fun race against his dad. He beat me, by the way. That was over at Bemidji. Uh, I, I got him and the yellow saved him, but he ran a hell of a good race. Kind of, It was kind of a fun deal over there. Uh, a guy that I competed with and heavily involved over at Bemidji. Um, Dusty likes to post that on Facebook every once in a while. Number nine, Aaron Burnick. He's all starting P2 at Rice Lake when they have that makeup feature. He had a pair of wins last year. And uh, with Jorgensen gone in, you know, in, in the area, right? Superior, Proctor, Ashland, somebody's got to step up. Is it going to be Aaron Burnick? We'll find out here in uh, probably this weekend. We'll find out. Number eight, Ty Schuler. So non-sanctioned, right? Going to mix them in here a little bit in the power rankings. Probably aren't never going to see these guys race against each other, which is unfortunate. You know, but it is what it is. Five wins and a couple, you know, Cody Hatch, Michael Brockman, both of those moved up into the street stock division, door wide open, Schuler, Jaden, some of them guys, we're going to Grenager. It's going to be interesting, but Ty Schuler with five wins last year, I think he might be one of the, one of the main guys to compete for a lot of wins over in Western Minnesota at number seven. And I'm going to get in big trouble for this one is my little buddy. I remember when, uh, I remember when this kid used to be, Little, and he used to actually steer my car up into the trailer after the races in Grand Rapids. Now he's wheeling the car, does a hell of a good job. Third generation driver, Chaston Finkbone. Pair of wins last year. Probably a ton of seconds behind his dad. He barely ever lost, right? But his dad's not racing this year. Going to be more focused on helping him. Of course, he's got the, the broken plan behind him as well. But you got third generation driver. His dad, Chad Finkbone, won a bunch of races. George Finkbone won a bunch of races. Does great track prep uh, with a with a whole crew of people up in Grand Rapids. Right now, Chaston's at number seven. Buddy, you want to get hired? You better park in Victory Lane a couple times here over the next couple weeks. We'll see what happens. At number six, and this one's going to piss off Chaston because they were competing, Tyler Kaczynski. Three wins last year. Your Wissota National Rookie of the Year in 2022. Again, door wide open. Proctor Superior, Ashland. It's going to be somebody. Could it be this guy right here? Number five, Austin Carlson. Five wins, a track championship at Bemidji last year. Between him, Chaston Finkbone, another guy that I'm going to talk about just a little bit. It's going to be really fun to watch in Grand Rapids especially, but Austin Carlson, a kid that definitely could be uh, winning a few more races. And he's one of the guys. He actually held off Chad Finkbone to win a race. That was tough to do. Number four. Travis Hazelton, another uh, great family racing name over there in Wisconsin. 11 wins, Eagle Valley Speedway champion this past week. A little bit of controversy. I don't know if him and Ryan Olson talked it out or not, but I guess we'll find out. But Hazelton with 11 wins could be a contender with a couple tracks there, maybe to get make some noise. But if I put these two head to head, this next guy I think beats him. That's Ryan Olson. Another second generation guy, eight wins, Rice Lake Speedway champion. Now, Eagle Valley, they were not sanctioned last year. They're sanctioned now. So now you have you have a Friday track, Jimtown, right? You got Saturday, they can go over to Rice Lake. And Sunday, I urge these drivers, get your butt up to the Halberline Speedway and Proctor, and uh, they're going to be in contention. Number two, and it's super unfortunate that this cat here does not get to race against any of the Wasota cars there in the Wasota Northern region. Alex Mira, 11 wins last year, Winnipeg and Kenora champion, Northern region rules. I, I'd like to see them. I don't, I don't know what the rules are, right? I'd love to see maybe a, a chance for them rules to kind of be the same as Wasota, but they're not. But uh, I think he's going to be dominant again up there this year. I got to watch a few races. Up in Kenora, especially a couple over at Winnipeg. This kid can flat out wheel a race car at number one. And he came up a little bit short last year, but he was super fast at the end of the year. And in my opinion, right now, this is my pick to win the Wasota National title in 2023. That's Josh Berg. Uh, 12 wins, third in Wasota last year. Top two are done, right? Chad Finkbone retired. Corey Jorgensen into a B, into a B mod. This kid is going to make some noise. He's absolutely going to be in the conversation at the end of the year. So there you are, buyracers.com, one to go show, pure stock, power rankings. Now let's jump on over to the Mod 4s. 
So we'll go back here a uh, couple weeks back. There were some races out west, a little bit of, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it here. So Gillette's feature got postponed, but Dean Larson got two more wins out west. He won at Sheridan and he won at Rapid City. Two cars, two cars at Rapid City. Not good. Good thing he went because they would have had one. Gillette, Wyoming, incidentally, had one late model. That was kind of an interesting deal, but it is what it is. So the old uh, Silver Bullet in his first six races went six for six. That changed. He came back to Minnesota, didn't quite have the same success, but uh, boy, what a head start for the national points, right? Princeton Speedway opener a couple weeks back, another second generation kid. Might be third. I'll have to find out on that. The old four, Tommy Pagonis, great move. He actually went up to the outside. Made a beautiful move around the outside of Chad Funt. Took home the, the week one win over at Princeton. And uh, this past weekend, we had three races go on, all in Minnesota. Granite City Motor Park, Cowboy Up, right? But, you know, as much carnage as there was, the race up front was really good in the Mod 4s. Tyler Larson, the 7L, of course, the, the kid, I think the kid of Dean Larson, held off a hard charge on Tommy, on Tommy Bowden to park it in Victory Lane over at their opener. North Central Speedway in Brainerd, Dustin Holquist, your reigning national champion. I'm going to give a donkey award here. No, not to Dustin, but to like basically everybody else in the freaking class at Brainerd. It's like, what are you doing? There was, I think I counted like 872 yellows. I'm not really sure. They cut the laps. It was absolutely just a debacle. Come on, do better. You can do better, right? Princeton Speedway. That would be his dad, Bob Holquist, in the five. Dustin got second in that, so good weekend for the Holquists over there. TB81, a third, a third, a second, and a second to start the season. Silver Bullet had a fifth and an eighth this weekend, not quite as good as it was when he went all west. So let's jump into it. The Biracers.com, one to go show, mod four, power rankings. Before we do, a little bit about Biracers.com. So, Four racers, by racers. Jordan Tollefson has a great staff of people down in Montevideo, Minnesota, um, and they actually have a they have a couple different companies, right? They have all uh, graphics and they have byracers.com. They do both. They do great work with both of them. If you need hats, shirts, hoodies, whatever you need, you need apparel. Check out byracers.com. They have you can get big quantities, small quantities, you name it. They do a great job. He's a racer. He's part of the racing family. Let's support those that are part of our group. So let's go to the mod fours here. Number 10, Gerald Noner. Two wins in 2022. Okay. North Central Speedway champion. Very consistent driver. 19 top fives. Right now I'm going to put him at number 10. At number, at number nine, Braddy Taylor. He only had one win last year, but 25 top five finishes. That's a hell of a rookie season for the kid all west. At number eight, the XL1. Chad Funt, three wins last year, only raced 15 shows, pretty good percentage there, won the Mighty Axe, unique looking car, different looking, right, and has a little different engine package as well, we'll talk more about that over the course of the season here. At number seven, Tristan Torres, eight wins out west last year, Black Hill Speedway track champion, also raced at the Bandit Speedway, which is Box Elder, South Dakota, right next to Rapid City, non-sanctioned uh so it's a little it's kind of an interesting deal a lot of the rapid cars don't go over there hopefully they can get both tracks going it's nice to have two tracks in the area it works proctor and superior do it they can make it happen too so tristan torres at number seven at number six tyler sikanga i think it's sikanga if i got that wrong please let me know okay five wins 2022 was soda national rookie of the year in the mod fours shared in speedway track champion Talked to some drivers from over this way that have made trips out there. And he said, this kid's for real. He's actually a legit good race car driver. He comes in at number six. At number five, Tyler Larson. Five wins last year. Parked in victory lane here at the opener at Granite City. Uh, KRA and Ogilvy track champion. Super consistent. Very consistent. Always in the conversation. Kind of keeps his stuff clean. Not necessarily that charger, but he's always there. He's number five. And at number four, we're going to go with Bob Holquist. Ten wins last year, fifth in the national standings. Princeton Speedway track champion has a win already early this year. One of the top runners in the Wasota Mod 4 division. Number three, 
the silver font, the silver bullet, my bad, the silver bullet, Dean Larson, 18 wins last year, six already this year. Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? A lot of people, not a lot, there's a few people that reached out and they're like, this is BS and he's going out west and Jerry picked him. Well, guess what? Don't blame him. He enjoys racing out there, right? He likes going out there. The, the rules, maybe there needs to be a little bit of a change on the point structure. I, I really hate the, the five-point separation between first and second. It's stupid. It's got to go. But uh, second in Wasota last year, 11 points back. Um, 2022 was a really good year for him. But six for six to start the season, he's already a third of the way to what he had for total wins last year. And we're not even to the end of May. So Dean Larson at number three. At number two, the reigning Wasota Mod 4 national champion, Dustin Holtquist. He also had 18 wins last year. Granite City track champion. Parked in victory lane already once this year. He's, he's really good. But I'm telling you right now, if I had to put these guys all together, and I know they race against each other, and I know he beat them already once, but over my, my eye test right now is telling me the number one driver right now in the Mod 4 division, Tommy Bowden. 15 wins last year, had a little bit of bad luck in there mixed in. He got third in Wissota, right? 21 points back. He was close, won the Wissota 100, 31 wins last in a, in a national championship in 2021. I got a feeling, right? There's some pretty good hot rods here. It's going to be fun to watch these drivers compete, but I got a feeling it's going to be back to TB81 on top of the standings in the Mod 4 division in 2023. So, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Hornets, the Pure Stocks, and the Mod 4s giving you all some love. Um, if you ever have any questions, comments, you know, feel free to let us know. And, and down below here, before you sign off, right, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're watching here on YouTube. Um, that, that helps us out a bunch. But uh, hopefully you enjoy it. You know, that's just a uh, just guy behind the mic giving his take on who the top drivers are to start the season. Things can change quick, fast, in a hurry. We'll find out if they do. Thanks for tuning in to the One to Go Show's uh, Power Rankings episode.